click, clicky click. If you're anything like me, then you'll know that there's no such thing as too many LFOs. Now, the Octatrack has three per track, which already is pretty damn good, uh, but I often find that it's actually not enough, and I'm going to show you the trick that I use whenever I'm in that situation. First, I just want to say thank you for choosing to watch my video, and I'm still not used to, to talking and stuff. It feels weird, but please feel free to do all the like and subscribe stuff if you want to. Um, you know, it will really help me to defeat the algorithm. Take a look at this situation that I found myself in. I've got this this guitar thing. Cool, and uh, this drum thing. And they're playing together. In a seemingly endless loop. I've got the guitar here which is completely dry and the guitar here which is caked in effects and the idea is I'm going to transition between the two to make the, the performance uh, more dynamic. Um, I'm also using a neighbor track here because I want to use more than two effects for this guitar. So you can see here I've got the filter and delay and on the neighbor track I'm using lo-fi and another filter. In track two, if I take a look at the LFOs, you can see I'm already using all three of the LFOs. LFO one is on the sample rate, LFO two is on the bit reduction, and LFO three is on distortion. So if I transition over here, you can hear these effects in action. Now's a good time to point out that this trick only works on through tracks, neighbor tracks, and the master track. And the reason for that is because we're going to use the sequencer as our LFO. So I want to do my trick on the neighbor track here. I want to add a fourth LFO. Essentially what I do is I create parameter locks. Um, you can also use triggerless tricks if you want to trigger the LFOs. Uh, but I'm going to use parameter locks. And I want to modulate the filter width here. So I'm going to start low. Copy that. I'm just going to paste it every two steps and then each alternate step I'm gonna boost that just like that so let's take a listen to it now sounds weird uh, but the reason for that is because we haven't activated our slide tricks for this trick don't activate the slide trick on trick one uh, we want to activate every other one. Another thing to point out is that the first trig should be set to the default value that you want to use when the LFO is switched off. And because we can switch the LFO on and off, that makes it really good for like transition effects, uh, which we'll get to later. So if we listen to it now with the slide trigs. Cool, we're modulating the filter width. We've got our queue up. Uh, the higher the cue, the more obvious the filter modulation is. So now if we go into our pattern settings, in this circumstance I'm modifying track 2, which is my neighbor track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to place 3 and select yes. Um, I'm going to set my trig mode to 1, 2. 1, 2 means I can turn the pattern on and off like a switch. Or we can also use hold to have it active only while holding down the track button. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use one, two. And then if I play the play my track, I can transition over to the effective one. And if I want to activate my fourth LFO, I just press this. If I want to deactivate, I just press it again. Now, a few other options that we have. Um, we can set it to a one-shot trig, which essentially means it's going to run through once and then turn off. Another one that we can play with is the trick quant quantize quant 
quantum, quantum leap. But we can also set it to 1 16th all the way up to 256 sixteenths. If we go all the way to the left, we can set it to direct, which is very useful when we are doing, when we are using the hold option. Let me show you the hold option. Just like that. Now the reason that we need to set the first trig to be your default values is because if I were to remove that trig, what you'll notice is that when the pattern switches off, for some reason it will take the parameter lock from the first trig and just hold with that. I don't know why it uses the first, in my mind it should really use the last one. I think it's a bug, so if anyone from Electron is watching, please please fix it, it really bugs me, um, and I hate it. But yeah, this is, this is the workaround that you have to use. Let me show you. There we go, it's gone. The guitar has gone. I'm not sure exactly why the guitar disappears, I just know that you need something in the first trig to uh, to kind of reset it to what it should be. It, it's really weird, I don't know, but that this is how you get around it. See? Just like that. So here's another thing. Uh, if you want to use this technique for, say, transitions, then you can set up your sequencer to behave more like an envelope um, instead of an LFO. Uh, you just, so in this example, let's, let's clear everything. We have a fresh new uh, pattern here. So I'm going to set a P-lock here and here. This the width is going to be way low. And here the width is going to be way high. I'm going to set my pattern mode to plays free and one shot track. And then I can play regular guitar, affected guitar. a nice transition into another section of music. I don't have another section of music prepared uh, because I didn't care enough to prepare that much. Um, who cares? Are you going to cry about it? I'm not going to cry about it. Will you lose sleep over it? Probably. I don't know. I don't know how important this is in your life. Uh, but what I do know is I didn't prepare a second piece of music to transition into. And I hope you don't mind. Yeah, okay, that's it. Enough learning for today. Let me give you a clap. Good job. Uh, I think we're done. Yeah, love you. Bye. Go on. I know you wanted to see this.